Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up for this Tuesday, the 25th of July, 2017. Just getting on to 4.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. You know, it's FOMC meeting day tomorrow. It's a hard market to trade because so many traders like to get neutral in the markets before they see that announcement. Yeah, there's that element of people that always want to position gambling which way the market's going to go. But a lot of the market traders, guys like me that have been around this for 45 years, they know enough to say, let those guys play their game. Even if you knew what the Fed's going to say, you don't know what the reaction of the market's going to be to it. That's the problem, so be careful. We have another market where we just keep going to the higher highs almost across the board in all these indices. The VIX did get down today to a new low for the move, but by day's end, it came back and settled unchanged. Now, if you think about it, what's 5% of 9? It's 45, right? So this market's traveling rather large back and forth in here, right? with 5% moves and people don't realize it. And that's all because the value of the VIX is now so low. So keep that in the back of your mind. I've been trying to make that clear to people so that they understand it. In the metal markets, while I have August gold on now, it's just a question of which day I switch to the December and expect that to happen. I still see silver gaining on gold. And the big news of the day was the copper market up 11 cents off of better Chinese growth in the quarter. Even for the year, they're looking that because they had such a good first half of the year that they can afford to sit back and they'll still be in the six and a half to six, seven growth period uh, for the year. And that is what's moving in part the copper, plus imports are up of copper. What's moving the market? The market is moving because of a red hot housing market. And as long as that stays strong and they're building homes and doing infrastructure as they are, copper's in need and it's quietly come alive. So something to consider there. As we go to the S&P, as you can see, this uptrend line is fully alive on the weekly bar chart. It's angling higher and the prices just keep moving higher with it. All right. So that's fairly important. As we <coughs> look at a daily bar chart, my eye goes to the fact of new all time high today. That's important. Swing line is got the pattern of higher lows, but this is a low that I'm not I always hate this formation. You're going to say why? Because you had an outside day down here. So while that's the swing line low, normally the swing line low is made up of really the low of a market. In this case, it wasn't. And I've trained myself always be suspect of that. Now, because it was an outside day down, the one time you had a shot in this market was when the market took that day's high out because what that does under my theories at least is it sets up what I call a bear trap. Why a bear trap? Because the market had a reversal down. You took out the previous day's high and low, closed lower on the day. Once you took that high out, as you'll see now looking at the market, it really never set back for any meaningful amount. You're right here at this point in time. When we look at the moving averages, you're over both the 18 and the 100 day average. And you haven't hit the uh, 18 days since the, well, getting on to, let's say, the first 10 days of the month. And now you're further along and the market's still moving up. In terms of Bollinger Bands, if you can thrust up again, that's a logical target. Be careful if you take out 2462. But the real overriding factor will be just keeping this embedded slow stochastic reading in place. Now, what do I mean by embedded for those of you that don't understand it? Let's understand what stochastics are. They're a momentum oscillator that typically travel between 80 and 20 if you follow the standard way of doing it. I have my own way of doing it. I really m m watch it and I keep the 80 and 20 the traditional way, but I'm always watching a 70 and 30 number. I want to be ahead of the crowd a little bit. Number two, what happens when a market converts itself in an overbought or an oversold area under 20 and just starts going sideways with these numbers. 
And the founder and creator of Slow Stochastics was George Lane, and many years ago I presented that idea to him, and I said, George, I have a word for it. It's called locked in, it's embedded, and what it does is it changes the character of the market until that number's lost. And when it's lost, prices often go back to a neutral point on a chart, and that's a different story that I'll get into, but until it's lost, pullbacks in the market are buying opportunities, and that's what I'm seeing as a technician still in the chart action. Lose that number, and I think you'll go back towards that 18-day average of closes. At least those are what the odds favor. It doesn't mean it has to happen, and it's certainly not a trade recommendation. When I go to the Dow Jones, first thing my eye sees is I'm overbought. I do not have an embedded reading. Yes, the market went up today for an all-time high, and it changed the chart picture because if I remove today's action, as of yesterday, you had lower highs and actually lower lows. But now what you've got is the market comes back through that, and now you've got the higher high. It doesn't matter. It's overbought as far as I'm concerned, caught between the Bollinger Bands, upside bias, and the battlegrounds, the 18-day average of closes. In the NASDAQ, you're in a clean uptrend. You've had a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. You're refusing to get up to that upper Bollinger Band, which is interesting. So there's other pieces of work you have to look at when you notice that for profit-taking tools. You know, you don't want to get close and not grab something off the table. You can always get back in, but uh, one of the ways to trade is looking at that. Trend is still up until you lose the embedded reading. That's all that I care about. And the Russell has joined the parade. Hello, Russell. You've now come in, you've embedded the reading, you got up to the upper Bollinger Band, supports back underneath you, but until you lose the embedded reading, everything's still bullish. In the VIX, the VIX got down to 904, a new low for this whole, whole reading. It might be a new all-time low. I'd have to look up the history of the VIX, but you gotta be close to it. And then it comes back to unchanged. No surprise to me. You've got an FOMC meeting, you had the Senate vote today, you got so much there, and holding that 5% decline intraday was not easy. Yeah, if, if, what's 5% of nine? It's 0.45. Well, if you look at today's range, you went from 952 to 904, you had about a 5% move intraday in the market, and it came back and gave that up. Okay. In the bond market, you've still got a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, but you've been overbought. So you're back to the 18-day average. If you give that up by very much, then the next support zone's 151.27, 151.11. Now, as these markets broke today, I was looking to see what the dollar index would do. As you can see, the 10-year also broke with it, and it too is overbought. So when I came to the dollar index, I was looking to see would it get a bounce off of that intraday? Because there's a relationship, higher US rates, often, not always, often can lead to a stronger currency. And we got an outside day up and a bounce. Let me give you the number that you have to be panicked of if you get through it, and that's today's low. That would set up a move that says, that was just a bounce and no more than that, and away you go. If it happens tomorrow or the day after, that could be a problem. Now, you'll say, well, should I sell it short then? That's the logical thing to ask. I also have a rule that says you don't sell lower Bollinger Bands, a problem. So hard one, I'd love to first see the bounce. So that's what I'm hoping to get, but the trend is down. And in the Euro currency, if you open lower tonight, keep your eye and see if you hold on to that embedded reading. It's at 86, the odds favor it, but you break 40, 50 points again in the market, you might lose that reading and go back and have to restructure this market towards the 18 day average. Let's not lose sight. The Euro hit a new high for this whole move. Remember, this is a market they were talking parity with the dollar six months ago. Now the market's pushing over 117. British pound, this is a market they thought would go into the toilet because of Brexit. Even the IMF thinks that there's problems. Okay, I can accept that. It's certainly not looking that way on the chart. Admitted, it, it's not in a trend. You have a higher high and a lower and low. You got sideways momentum, upside bias, and the Bollinger Band is waiting for you at the 130, 130s, but that's not 123, that's 131. That's a big difference in the numbers. In the Japanese yen, if you were studying what happened this morning, and I did write about it, two of the new policymakers from the Bank of Japan got on board, and the first thing they did is they pledged allegiance. They're not going to vote to end the easing of their 
uh, their stimulus program until they get to 2% inflation. It's not bullish, this currency. So again, you come down. Now, it could be bullish if the markets were looking at problems in the world elsewhere because the yen is a safe haven currency. But that particular news today was not bullish, and the market, of course, overbought as can be. In the WTI crude, it's still, if you will, the fallout of the Saudis saying that uh, they're going to cut more production in August, get to that million barrels a day unilaterally, that there's cheating going on, possibly Iraq and other countries. They're going to find ways to tighten that up right now, blah, blah. So the market goes to the upper Bollinger Band and stops there. Between here and the 100-day average, you're getting very rich in price in an overbought condition and probably hedgers eyeing this market right now. Gasoline market is trendless and overbought. You got a lower low, a higher high, you're back to the upper Bollinger Band, difficult market right there. And in that gas, you're trendless. You've had a higher high and a lower low, momentum pointing down, bias down, and without hot weather, we're already into uh, the latter part of July, going to be into August. You know, pretty soon after that, we don't get those crazy hot days. So, got to keep your eye on this market for potential maybe uh, of the market eventually rolling over a bit in price. We'll see just what happens and when that all happens. So, you put that together, and there's another thing. Today's Tuesday. So, consensus. Now, what consensus is, is what their name says. It's a compilation of newsletters written by many, many different firms. I happen to be one of them that uh, publishes here. But they're contributors. There's pages of them, and they're forever adding to them and so on. And what these do is people write and they contribute a letter. You can read the whole letter on consensus. Then they take it and they create their bullish sentiment index. So they look to see how many are bullish, how many are bearish, and then they put that into an index so it gives you an idea are people more friendly, less friendly in market? What's going on? They offer you a four-week free trial to it. It uses typically your email address and the password you'll be able to set. How you get this is very simple, and it is free from us. You give us a call at 866-973-2077. You can go to our website at www irapstein.com. You'll see a carousel of free offers. You can click up here if you're watching me on YouTube or underneath us on many websites. What it says is click here for Ira's free offers. We'll put this in your hands. Take advantage of it. I've been reading it for years. Love the publication. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day.